views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online, a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you can post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not, no retribution. And uh, you can also subscribe to my Twitter feed, Twitter.com slash Gary Baumgarten, which is really a news feed, which uh, tells you everything you need to know about all the important issues that face us today. Most importantly, obviously, the situation in Iran, which we will discuss in just a moment. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to Pal Talk. Somebody pulled the plug. There was some kind of a power outage, and our servers went down, and they knew they had to get them up by 5 o'clock New York time for News Talk Online on PalTalk.com. And our emergency response team rushed to the scene and rerouted circuits just in time for us to come to air today. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Well, we've been talking for a week now, and we will probably continue to be talking about the biggest story of our current uh, time, at least uh, this week, maybe longer. Uh, And that is the uh, apparent revolution going on in uh, Iran. I did not call it a revolution up until now, but I think tomorrow we will see uh, a shift from protesting to revolution. I'm going to tell you why. Today, the uh, Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, in a 100-minute speech, as he was uh, doing his uh, leading the nation in prayers on today, the Sabbath, Friday, the Sabbath, in the Muslim world, told the protesters, the election is over. There will not be a recount. We believe that Ahmadinejad is legitimately the president and the president re-elect of um, Iran. And there will be swift and decisive action if you go to the streets again. Well, from all accounts that I'm getting, they will be going to the streets again tomorrow. And if they do, we will probably see confrontations not dissimilar to the ones we saw the first day, in fact, probably with even greater force now that the goons have gotten the green light from the Supreme Leader himself, which means, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see a revolution in all likelihood unfold itself right in front of us. If they are, if that does happen, if the people do take the, to the streets tomorrow, One of two things, obviously, is going to be the ultimate outcome of all this. They will succeed, and hopefully a government will be installed that will ensure basic human rights and freedoms to the people of Iran, or they will not succeed, and the retribution on them will be horrific. I shudder to think what will happen if that happens and they fail to succeed. Now, a couple of points before we get to our guest. We have talked about the fact that the President of the United States has remained largely mute on the issue. Not the Congress. The Congress, both houses, have voted to condemn the government of Iran for its vicious attacks on its own people. I applaud members of both parties for stepping up and doing the right thing. Finally, and in the U.S. Senate, it was a unanimous vote. Finally, unanimity over an important issue by our elected officials. I think they speak more loudly and more clearly than the White House right now on this issue, which is really a a kind of disappointing to me. Secondly, 
the uh, regime is trying to blame outsiders for what's happening here. Now they blame the Brits, the British, the uh, Iranian ambassador to, the, uh, to Great Britain has been called to London to explain to the government there why Ayatollah Khamenei singled out uh, Great Britain. They also claim that the Zionist-controlled media is causing this problem. Anybody with an ounce of understanding knows that this is an organic response by the people of Iran to 30 years of tyranny and uh, repression. And the fact that the vote was obviously stolen was just enough to put them over the edge. Our guest today is Puya Dayanim. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, sir. D-A-Y-A-N-I-M. Dayanim, 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 right? Puya Dayanim. He is an expat, expatriated uh, Iranian fighting for the freedom of people back in his homeland. He's joining us from California. Puya Dayanim, welcome to News Talk Online on PalTalk.com. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Uh, so is my analysis correct? Is tomorrow a deciding day on what's going to happen in Iran uh, based on what uh, Ayatollah K- uh, Khamenei said today? Well, um, I hope that your uh, prophecy comes true. I am not sure if we are headed to a revolution, but if things continue to unfold the way that they have been for the past week, uh, we might be heading for that direction. And I think that the ruling class will have no one to blame but themselves. Uh, I'm seeing in text in our virtual auditorium on paltalk.com, sir, somebody saying from Iran, we are all scared. And the tweets that I have been receiving from people who I have learned to trust over the past seven days from Iran uh, suggest the same thing. We are scared, but we will defy and go out on the streets tomorrow. It says a lot about the resolve of the Iranian people. Look, um, as you stated yesterday, for the past one week, what we've been saying, what we've been seeing unfold. Uh, is uh, is very interesting, and if you indulge me, I'll share my thoughts with uh, with uh, with the listeners uh, out there. Absolutely. Uh, what we have had uh, is a, some sort of a royal palace coup, where the security of the palace has taken over the palace. What I mean by that is that when the Iranian revolution took place. Uh, It was a revolution that was started by the working class, the poor, uh, people 